Go ahead, Alexander. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to this session. I'd like to, yes, to present a little bit about our workshop just here. So um, this is about a part participatory research agenda for open education post pandemic. And we will be talking uh, and also using uh, two uh, apps to share ideas. Um, and this is, uh, is a dialogue. I would like that all of you please feel very relaxed. I would like to ask if you could uh, uh, write in, uh, in the chat uh, your name, your country, um, and also why you, you are you know, introducing yourself, please. I would like to know if you have a drink. <laughs> so please, uh, yes, if you are able to, to get a drink, it would be great. So um, I like it a lot, the topic of this event, OEA Global Open Education, which is connect. Connect people, connect ideas. And this is uh, very interesting because the, our project at the Open University, uh, funded by the European Commission, is uh, CONNECT. And it's about connecting students, families, uh, universities, academics, um, and also policymakers to tackle uh, real problems. And then we are very focused on the uh, sustainable uh, goals uh, of UNESCO. So, in this event, yes, um, I'd like just to, to explain a little bit about CONNECT. And this is um, about, um, it's an inclusive um, open schooling with engaging and future-oriented science. And that project will be offering partnership systems and policies, partners, projects, database, topical scenarios, science action, within science topics. Um, this is just for you to, to know all of you that uh, it would be so lovely and useful this conversation for um, many, many projects, including CONNECT. So um, here is just a, a, an introduction about this framework that we are using the project about um, developing with the community uh, a, a participatory research. We could be like agenda, a research agenda. So we will be involving all these different stakeholders, uh, different societal actors, which is the, the students from secondary schools, from the universities and their communities with the scientists from uh, the institutions and even uh, research labs. And they will be uh, using uh, specific tools, developing, um, identifying key problems or developing potential solutions. But we'd like to see um, students, learners as protagonists, able to identify and finding methodologies, approaches and tackle together in cooperation with the community. So that's the way to develop knowledge, competences, um, skills, competences I'm talking about, knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values. So that for, for this process, for getting people involved, we are using that framework, which is about to identify issues that matters, matter for them. They care. So students or local community, they care about the, the either um, is uh, related to health uh, with the COVID pandemic or uh, effects of the pandemic in the community. So, they will be identify, identifying what they are worried or concerned and is really important or very relevant for the community. So in our case, in our open education global community network, 
we will be thinking now, what are our key issues for open education post pandemic? So to answer this question, uh, I would like to introduce a little bit about the second step of this framework, which is no. I would like to offer an overview about um, 12 um, presentations or workshops, uh, posters, 12 pieces of work from people here in the Open Education Global Conference who use the either COVID-19 or pandemic in their work. So I select, I checked all the abstracts available in the program and it, there were kind of 12 uh, presentations and they are tackling an issue relevant for post pandemic or for, during the pandemic. And then I would like just to introduce in note two um, a framework that is developed by the um, OECD, Education 2030, the Education for this next decade. And that is about thinking about um, focusing on learners' competencies, learning environments, partnerships, and education to support the sustainable development goals. So this is an introduction of our works workshop. And then we will be doing some activities it's like the dialogue and I will be mapping the dialogue. So let's see. And uh, yeah, this is the, the approach for this um, moment now. So to start this, I'm, I would like to know if you could go to this, uh, the, the main meter because I needed to collect from all of you key issues, key words about, uh, yes, if you could, I'm just going to open this here. And uh, yes, if you could please write a key word, if you don't like to go to them, main to me that if you are in a mobile phone, if you can just type in the chat, this is fine. Or if you'd like to get them, the mic, yes, the, 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 if you'd like to share your keyword as well. So, uh, yes, I'm going to just see the, the chat and then we're going to open the Mentimeter. Yeah, this is the first activity. I know that we have a, a small community. Uh, And also, yes, and I can share with you. This is to try to find. Uh, while I'm doing that opening, I would like to know, yeah. Uh, Ale, it's already, the link is already in the chat. Yes, oh great. If you put the link in the chat, I'd like to know because I I had so many screens open, so I had to close and I closed the, the outcomes. I just um I'm trying to see how I'm going to find it again. So while we're doing that, I would like it to carry on just to introduce a little bit about a summary of this OEA Global Connect because this is might, might inspire you as well. So uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to, to present that. Okay, so um, here is, is um, we have like 12 um, papers or abstract presented in the program or a global event. And as you can see, um, yes, we have uh, like three, four, four uh, abstracts from Taiwan, and but then we have uh, work from India, Netherlands, Ireland, United Kingdom, Canada, United States, 
to and hear all of us that somehow are thinking about COVID, the pandemic in open education. And in many, many um, work studies focus, in, focus on uh, higher education. But it, there are two in lifelong learning and one in K-12. So, and if you can see, there are many um, initiatives that they are focusing in developing supportive policy. Some working, some work uh, related to facilitate international cooperation, building capacity, sustainable open educational resources. So this is give us give us an idea about what people are talking or they are concerned related to open education and the pandemic. So if you go to the title of the papers, then uh, it's, it's very interesting because there are some papers that they are highlighting this key challenge, which is remote teaching for the first time. I found like three papers. And some papers are discussing in a learning environments like uh, MOOC, um, also more interactive environments and pedagogy as well, how to ensure continuity of education, um, also how to use the audiovisual or text, text or materials that they are more engaging and how to develop that in a short period, a synchronous versus asynchronous. And it's very hard for the teachers to, to teach in synchronous when the students, they don't have this uh, uh, internet connection all the time or there is lots of problems and the flexibility is really uh, uh, key in, in this uh, open education during the pandemic. There are some, some uh, work related to students' engagement and uh, how to decrease their workload because many students and even women that they are taking care of children or even um, parents in general with the homeschooling and they have to work and they have to study. So there are lots of workloads. And it, for the students who are in universities, there is one work that is about the social distancing, which is hard for the ones who are attending uh, universities face to face. And there is this um, work about a uh, state of anxiety and fear. And, um, and I would like to highlight as well, this challenge of replacing the traditional learning face-to-face uh, -face, uh, with a blended or completely remote learning model. But the, the big picture, yes, if you think about the big challenges, we have two uh, yes, papers that they highlighted. One is, is uh, by uh, Cathy um, in the United States, that she was an important, uh, um, how can I say, um, leader in the open education movement. And she highlighted in her presentation that the pandemic will amplify, is amplifying existing inequalities. And it is very related to, to what um, um, this uh, workshop is about. We are uh, reflecting about the laws of learning and the inhuman capital across the world. High, drop, high dropout rates low learning outcomes and the increased inequalities, particular between low achievers and the high achievers, which will affect uh, all areas, including uh, employability, like getting jobs or entering the university. So it's the whole ecosystem. Um, and that is just to, you know, bring some ideas to inspire our dialogue. Um, uh, before, 
Yes, uh, before talking about uh, the framework, I would like to open for questions. Um, I would like to know if any of you have um, seen these presentations or participate or attending, and if you'd like to share your ideas. Please, I would like to hear <laughs> your voices as well. But I'm going to look here at the chat. I, oh, by the way, I, it's uh, Igor, our facilitator. Igor, could you help me, please? This is a- I will be facilitating. So I've, uh, I'm looking at- Oh, the, Martin, yes, Martin. Yeah. Uh, I've not been able to see many of the sessions, unfortunately, not as many as I would have wanted. So it's really impressive that you uh, made this scan over the program and connected it to your presentation or your workshop. Um, it's interesting times where I think, well, a remote teaching and open education meet and uh, provides with uh, new opportunities. Uh, are there, we've got some extra people coming in. Um, let's see, and I don't know if I pronounce the names correctly. Sup, Supa and Maria, Anya, Dr. Aroma and Matilda, maybe you can share your thoughts. You can all unmute yourselves if you if you want to speak or if you want to write in the chat, that's also Absolutely. fine. <laughs> yes, and there's a question in the chat. Do you have any solution for the high dropout rate? This is, this is, a very, this is one of the big questions, yes. Um, because we need to understand what are the needs, what is happening now. The drop, drop, drop up rate today exists even in face-to-face -face or online education. I am from the Open University and we have been using um, a lot of different approaches from learning, learning analytics to fun, engagement, to understand what is the meaning of student satisfaction what is the meaning of why uh, the purpose of you know completely higher education for them and how they can enjoy and make the best and take the best from that experience so this is the whole work that i've been doing related to fun but in the opposite side which is the data big data the open university we started with um, when I, I started at the Open University in 2006, and the OU had more than 250 students, 250,000 students. And now we have 170. So it, it's a big, uh, you know, yes, we, we cannot understand how it's a big dropout. Um, and this is not even related to the pandemic. But with the pandemic, the fact is that um, these numbers will increase. Um, for our institution, we offer flexible learning. We are well considering micro, micro credentials, we engaged in the open, uh, move, open education movement at the early stage. And we can see how, you know, the big benefits of open education to support students that they were not sure to join. And with the open resource, open educational resources, they become a little bit more confident. So we have many stories, many stories about this. It's about more than 12 years, yes, of stories related to uh, open learn, which is still there. But what I'd like to, to talk is about, uh, probably if we think of the big context, is a little bit hard. But if we, you, we start to talk about our goal here, why you are here in this um, workshop, this is really important. And um, 
Dr. and dropouts. If it, this is really important to for you, yes. What is the solution of dropouts? I would like you to hear if any idea <laughs> we could do a, a kind of a brainstorm. I think what you mentioned. So um, the dropout. Uh, it's a different story now with the the pandemic. Other factors might be influencing the dropout. So maybe a more personal. Um, uh, personal approach towards the learners, towards the students, might, or more individual approach, even even more than than usual. And the circumstances are, you know, different. Some you might not even be able to to influence, um, but you can do your best. I see. Uh, so, Dr. Roma has raised her hand and is now also unmuted. So yeah. go ahead. If you uh, have yeah, a question. this is trying to unmute. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, welcome everybody and thank you so much for <laughs> you know unmuting me yeah actually very important question uh, Alexandra you have put up that uh, what should be done regarding the solution for the high drop rates and I think um, the two different stories uh, before the pandemic and after the pandemic because that has uh, changed a whole lot of things around us uh, regarding most of the countries what I feel it is uh, you know the various uh, reasons are there for uh, the dropouts uh, depending uh, on the social framework of the country, what are the dropouts, why the dropouts, but what we could do, like, uh, you know, helping people, those who really are interested in education, we can uh, provide them dual uh, enrollment or some sort of night schooling, which is already there. We are also doing that, or uh, the career academic schools, we have some uh, interest schools, we have Online education is now going to be a big, big uh, support uh, to overcome the drop uh, rates, those who want to work and want to learn. Because this pandemic has really set up a, a pace for especially the course known as MOOCs. People are going to for MOOCs, uh, massive open <clears throat> online courses, whether they're junior level, secondary or higher level. So I think this uh, pandemic and the technology, which uh, is now really has gained energy, would uh, be there in the coming time and future and would definitely solve uh, the case of uh, dropouts because we can get connected anytime, anywhere. And it depends on what type of technology we have. So I think government all over the globe should try to update the technology and to overcome the drop rates, especially providing those technology facilities to those who are less privileged. Thank you so much. Somebody else can continue. Yeah, so there's another question. Uh, can we create a personalized learning environment in MOOCs? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, if, if Alexandra wants to say something or somebody else, or I can say something. Uh, ah, this is very uh, good so because I would like to see, I mean, soon I'm going to stop the, the screen, I'm going to share another one, but uh, dropout and MOOCs, yes. So first to, to complete the idea of dropout, I just included here that offering technologies and more engaging pedagogies for disadvantaged students is really important now. So these two uh, elements and including learning environments, personalized learning MOOCs, and which is another idea. But talking about its advantaged students, I've been working in different communities, including I'm from Brazil, and we are working with an area in uh, affected by um, the uh, big problems with the climate change. As you know, Brazil, we had many fires in the Amazon forest in Pantanal, and it is all recent and that is a, a semi-arid area. That's a big problem, no water. And they, they don't have um, internet and how they are facing education, how they are you know, they're addressing isolation and how they are learning in these conditions. So technology is really important. There in Brazil, in, even in, in hard, difficult, remote areas, the community, they are now more used to mobile phone. So uh, the, the, oops, the government, the council, the state, they are supporting these initiatives in industry to give the ship for the students to connect to the internet. 
So this is the way for access, uh, access. Some initiatives in Brazil in these difficult areas, they have a partnerships for um, uh, provide getting uh, uh, laptops or computers, uh, reusing this kind of equipment and to offer in centers that the community can access. But that, um, yeah, that they are investing a lot in printed material as well. So um, technology is a key point because they, for communication in Brazil, they are using podcasts. And that was uh, very interesting because we have students creating the podcast, not only the teaching stuff. And that was very successful because the students, they sometimes, sometimes know what the difficulty is and they can do the podcast in, because they, some of them are very used to with technology. And that this was a very successful initiative. So having many, many, you know, ideas from, from, from there, from this difficult situation, even connecting TV, because they have, um, even like poor uh, areas, they have a, in, slum, they, in slums, they have a TV, and the, 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 the government started to work some, some uh, yeah, local council uh, with the university developing programs using the TV. <laughs> so how did the technology is really important, the mass communication technology, but the most important, of course, is this interactive technology because they needed to interact with the other peers or interact with the teaching staff. This is vital. But talking about uh, pedagogies and the MOOC, so personalized learning, I think that one key concept for this post-pandemic will be mastering learning. Mastering learning, it's uh, about supporting every, every, all learners. They can, they, um, you know, they can work towards the learning objectives. However, some learners will take more time or will need more breakdown complex activities in small learning goals and work more with the big ideas and the big understanding that supports particularly topics that are very difficult, like science, uh, maths, that they need background knowledge, previous knowledge. So mastery learning is key point. And um, we know that some, um, yes, environment, learning environment, if you design properly, it's possible from MOOCs to small uh, courses to organize activities for uh, pre-assessment, diagnostic assessment, to understand what are, you know, the uh, right challenge for these different levels of group of students. So, and that is very related to that flow. I'm mean, talking about Mihaly and this is important scholar that tell us the flow and the importance of enjoyment. So, if in a MOOC you offer very difficult problems or tasks and just for the high achievers, the low achievers will feel very anxious. They will feel that they are not capable. They will not enjoy, and that will increase that drop down, that drop uh, dropping rates. Yes, dropout rates. But if you are able to uh, align these different levels of students' skills with the different types of activities that are from um, small challenges to big challenges, then you are um, in your MOOC, make this more accessible for all of them. And this is, um, you are also increasing the chances for them to enjoy more, to feel capable and more confident. So this is related to enjoyment. 
and it's very important. So that I don't know if it, I uh, answered, but I, I would like to hear a little bit about your comments. You, I think I hear you talk about the pedagogical aspect here um, related to the COVID or the pandemic situation. Um, a lesson we might be able to learn from it is that you know student well-being also needs a lot of attention right now. Uh, I can imagine. So, what are your thoughts about that in, in related to your last uh, answering the question? So, uh, in uh, in uh, the personalizing a MOOC experience on a pedagogical level, how do you see uh, implementing uh, student well-being aspects there? Yes. So, um, there is a big agenda for well-being. And um, I am very involved uh, in European projects and also funded uh, research. And I know that uh, um, there are initiatives from um, organizations supporting this type of research related to well being. Because one um, important element for being able to learn is having your first needs addressed. That means food. If you think that in, in these countries that um, lots of students, they had access, not just for the um, educational environment, but also food. Is a, we're talking about the public, the, the free meal schools. And that was one problem. The kids, they didn't have access to food anymore. Apart from food, we have uh, the um, uh, physical um, um, sports or, um, yes, feel good because you are able to um, do your activities, physical activities, and also have a social life. And this affected as well students, more depression. We have also we map the problems in a few countries that the level of violence increased, particular um, violence in um, uh, at home. Yes, um, this is really difficult to address. And the, all this of this affecting the, the education. Um, so when um, the other issue related to well-being is also mental well-being. So there are lots of uh, also uh, studies tackling the problem of uh, cognitive overload, um, the time that we are spending in front of our screens, um, all these you know, um, difficult situations, people uh, losing jobs, and that increased the stress, that increased the pressure, that affects the well being. And in particular, in this situation, and not just the disadvantaged uh, students, but also in any family that they are, you know, facing fear as one of the studies um, indicated, yes, they are very concerned. So the question is, of course, there is no a miracle, but what I, uh, we think that's really useful now is increasing the numbers of the people connected, the researchers, uh, initiatives, funders, that we can together work with these different problems. So this is, is the way I think that it, we could um, um, organize better uh, potential solutions when we discuss with this, the community. And the European Commission now is promoting a lot of this uh, um, trend. We, talk, we are talking about science with and for society. It's, it's, if we get this uh, veil to open education movement, it is about open education with open learners for open learners. And we need to engage more the open learners in this ecosystem of open education. 
Yes. <laughs> so I'd like you to see more comments in the chat before. Yes, talking about OE, OE, OE Global. OER. I would like you to, before I move to the UNESCO, uh, sorry, the OECD framework, I would like you to know more issues from the OE Global, from the presentations that you have, you know, part, uh, you have participated or your own presentation. Would you like it to share any topic? I'm following also the, um, uh, just to come back here to the Zoom. Yes, can I, uh, please. Can I make a comment? So yes, hi, please. Ali, this is Bea from, from Delft. Um, I must confess, I am, so I'm, I'm, I'm not the right person in a way because I must confess, and this is going to sound awful, but every time I see COVID-19, I run a mile. So, um, I would not have, um, you know, any. It, my issue is that, and and I can give you one of the examples because I was present at some of these um, presentations. Uh, so, for example, the the, the Irish uh, presentation from uh, it was Orna Farrell and, and and her colleagues, and and that was uh, one of the things they what happened was that they so they were talking about uh, professional learning. They were getting ready. Uh, to launch a course on how to teach online uh, right before, but they would, they never designed it with a pandemic in mind, obviously. So uh, when they were ready to launch uh, and they were kind of thinking of maybe having say 40, 50 people in, in, in the course, uh, all of a sudden, because it was pandemic time, they found themselves with uh, 400, 500 people registering to, to take the course, right? Um, so, my question to you all is, yes, we're talking about the issues of the pandemic and the direct response of what's been happening and everybody adapting and changing and doing things in a different way. But how many of those things we've done in a different way do you think will remain once we, uh, inverted commas, go back to, to a normality? See, see what I mean? Yes, and it, and in that question, you, you, you might find it many answers because it's all based on the context. Uh, for instance, in some universities, yes, they are more prepared for distance education, like open university. Um, we didn't have big issues, but we had some uh, problems. For instance, we have uh, students that had to, to work in, uh, in tutorials face-to-face. -face. And in our, um, we did a, a survey and we could see the, the importance of this face-to-face -face events for the students that they were missing. But when you were talking about universities that the teachers had to change or had to start to work uh, remotely or online, yes, um, with this synchronous or asynchronous tools and without preparation, because it's completely different to uh, work online with a curriculum and work face to face. So in, in, in different institutions, which I am observing, they have different questions from things from how I can transform the curriculum in hours face-to-face -to, -face to online, because that is not completely direct, you know, calculation or maths that you spend like four hours in, a, in, a, in with three topics and you have a four online uh, hours working on that activities. It's impossible. You need to understand the cognitive overload. You need to understand what it means uh, giving students the time for make sense and the discussions that they don't have with the peers. You need to come up with different strategies and the technology, how they will be, how would be that experience. But the fact is that the teachers, they, many, many teachers, they had to be very brave and start to, you know, work differently using technology. And we have good stories 
difficult stories, they call the challenging stories, but it's lesson learned, all lesson learned. And I feel that even if in the, like a post pandemic, we needed to extract these lessons learned to, to increase the quality of education. And this is the right moment for this reflection. This is the right moment to start an agenda because we can extract the lessons learned. I, I liked so much this event, it is uh, all e-global online and I was observing conversations, um, not only in the, in the um, platform, but also online when the speaker was not there and the people started to talk. And, it, and it then I, I loved when the people said, oh, I, I can talk, I can um, take care of my pet, I can do things at home and I'm still learning, connected and sharing my ideas. So we also need to understand that the learners, the teachers had this different um, situation uh, about teaching at the first time remotely. And the learners or all of us, this is our first conference, OE Global, completely online. <laughs> and this is also a new experience for us, how to extract from uh, this event these wonderful ideas or problems, issues, and also do the networking online, which is lovely to do face-to-face, -face, but how about doing online? So this is, uh, this OER Global is 24 hours event. It's like even, you know, it's a big change. And that change is happening. So resilience is a key point. Um, the, the, my work is very related to responsible research and innovation. And the RRI helps a lot in this kind of adversity, which is about, um, anticipation, anticipation of risks, examining consequences, adaptivity, reflexive, reflexivity, reflect about the issues and how to adapt fast to respond to this uh, adversity. So we are developing lots of skills now, and, but it, we, this must be explicit explicit because we needed to also to make learners to understand that they can develop a lot of skills now, apart from deal with the content, with their knowledge, with increasing their understanding, they need conceptual knowledge. But how to do that online? They need the opportunity to increase their skills how to do that without the peers, without face-to-face. -face. And then thinking about the end users, the learners, the teachers, people, then we can think about the technology, we can think about the MOOC, how to structure better. But the other I approach with responsible research and innovation, it starts first with the people, society needs. We call the societal needs, priorities and ex expectations. And then this alignment of a scientific innovation to tackle these issues. So this is the key message, which I, I think that is also good for this final moment that we could be thinking about what is this education 2030? We are in 2020, so we are just in this, you know, um, moment, important moment in history and able to reflect about this adversity and thinking how we can change or how we can improve, how we can keep good things, but then scale it up. Yes, give more accessibility and increase our impact or legacy. 
And that is exactly the beginning of this next decade, which is 2030, with the education. We need to think now long term. And that is, I would like to restart that, that conversation with this uh, next. Uh, um, I left a video, by the way. The video is in with this uh, workshop description in the program. I don't know if it, yeah, I could have a time to show the video, but uh, this image is a summary of the video. And the well-being, which we you mentioned, yes, how to promote the well-being, individual and societal well-being. And that was the answer from the OECD with this learning framework. The importance of connecting knowledge. When I'm talking about knowledge, it's disciplinary, the content, interdisciplinary. It's exactly we needed to understand the connection between these uh, different areas of knowledge. You needed that interdisciplinary knowledge. Epistemic, epistemic is the way that you create knowledge. So you needed to understand this, um, having this meta-analysis, yes, the epistemic views and the procedural is the how in practice, how to create knowledge. And then you need these skills. The skills, not just cognitive or metacognitive, metacognitive, is about social, emotional, physical, yes, about you <laughs> as your whole you. We talk your body, your mind, your soul, your emotions, and the practical skills. And then also attitudes and values particularly because we are now facing this important moment, uh, the counting down of the destruction of the earth. There is a beautiful BBC program that they are showing what's happening in the planet. And it's a countdown for this the destruction. So we needed to foster the next generation with the attitudes and values, personal, local, societal, and global. The whole combination of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values is the contents. But for that, the contents, we need to engage parents, teachers, communities, peers. And the, when we're talking about the communities, I'm talking about not only civil society organizations, the citizens, but I'm talking about policymakers entrepreneurs, the industry, companies, is the whole, you know, societal representatives. And that is so important for the learners at the center. If you can see my image, students, they are in the center. And they need that basics, numeracy, literacy, digital literacy, health literacy, data literacy, because they will be able to create a new value, taking responsibility, reconciling tensions and dilemmas. And that will help them to reflect, anticipate, and act towards well being. So I think that this is very interesting framework, very useful. And we need to bring our voice our minds, our souls to work together towards this framework, adapting it, extended it, uh, reuse, reusing and disseminating because we need to come together. It's about connection. Connection is learners' competencies, learning environments, think about the partnerships and the sustainable development goals. And this is very connected to the green economy 4.0, which we needed to prepare our next generation. So to finish this, because I would like that all of you have a final moment, you know, for lunch or even breakfast. I don't know the time or uh, the afternoon snack, but I'm, I started with this Padlet, yes, to start to, 
keep in contact with you and I'm writing down there some uh, information important from the chat. And I'm now asking the, the yes, I'd like to hear more of about your ideas related to the Education 2030. So I'm now, I'm going to open the, the chat. Any comments? I tried copying the link to the Padlet in the chat. I hope I clicked, I, I typed it correctly, so you can use that link. Yes, please. If you can use the link, it's the way to keep in contact. I be you know there. I mean, open this now, and I'd like it to to know if I can stop sharing and change the window which I don't know exactly. Zoom is not my favorite <laughs> platform, particularly because the Open University, yes, they, they don't support Zoom for various reasons. Um, I don't know. Be able to know find the share I screen stop. button or uh, the, if you hover. Ah, over. new share, perfect. Yeah. I found it. Now we so, see your padlet. Okay. Uh, it would be, uh, if you want to uh, have more input on this after the workshop, please do share the link in your uh, Connect abstract ah, description mm -hmm. and know, uh, let people know that you're looking for input via Twitter or via other channels in the Connect platform, perhaps. Maybe you can extend the conversation and, uh, and your reach to people. Perfect. That I will do that. Um, yes, I can see that the people are a little bit reflective now, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit quiet, which is fine. I mean, I'm happy, people, but I would like to talk about the, sorry, just to, I can see uh, some comments like pedagogy, well-being, personalized learning MOOC, Drupal's Dur innova innovation in education, engaging learning. So this is some ideas that came, came from this, uh, meeting as this workshop. Interesting topics. I think, um, if you have ideas, feel free to use the Padlet as some as one now been added as well, or I see something happening in your Padlet. That's good. Ah, this is interesting. The role of open education in workforce retraining. If so I support, added, yeah. If you're the one I supported, added, by the way. <laughs> Sorry? I wanted to say if, if the one uh, who added this comment wants to talk, uh, unmute. Oh, yes, then, please. Uh, please comment on your, uh, on your contribution. If you don't feel comfortable, you can also use the chat if you want. Okay, so I'm just going to be very brief about it. That was that was my comment that I made there. Uh, so I think that there is a great opportunity here. You know, as a result of COVID-19, obviously millions of people around the world have lost their livelihoods, and are now going to have to look for ways to, you know, regain employment. And some of them are actually not going to be able to re-enter the sort of jobs that they were used to, and there will be looking for ways how to reskill, retrain in order to be able to retain new, um, uh, re-enter the job market, uh, sometimes in completely new domains. And so this is where the open education has got a really crucial role to play. And this needs, there needs to be, I think, a bit more emphasis on how open education can support such efforts. Yes, uh, I, I support the two initiatives. One is about uh, um, the job, job market that is changing with the COVID and then uh, new jobs that came up a little bit, you know, um, 
that they didn't have people to, to apply and the other jobs that they have a big problems, particularly uh, artists and the people who were working uh, with um, tourism. So this is all affected. And then um, also I supported another um, network that they are developing now um, mini courses. They break down uh, a program for professional development and they are doing this to respond to this fast pace and the difficulties of people with time. And that is also very connected to the micro credentials when you, you need these mini certificates and that probably combined, you can um, you know, get more benefits in your career or professional development. But it's important to have these mini skills or important specific skills that will help people with employability. Um, and the open education can help in these two, you know, um, we call it in these two challenges. One, open education to understand the job market and to analyze the needs and to see trends. And open education can also support this breakdown of big courses and small courses and how to reorganize the set of skills within uh, micro uh, credentials or mini certificates or open badges. And even now in the OE, OE Global, we had the smart badges, which was a work presented by my university, Alex Microunities. He uh, introduced the smart badges that is a little bit different. So the professional or the open learner taking uh, a course that is uh, in the, in the uh, blockchain platform they will be able to show that micro credential or smart badge, and also the employer will be able instantaneously to check to check it. So it is it's very interesting. Yeah. All right. So um, the participants, we've all had some time to look at the padlet and add uh, input. Um, do share the link via other channels to get more input but i think you know given the time that we've had to create input and looking at what is here now maybe you can continue alexander are you still there or yes i am i'd like it too yes i'm available we can now start our informal conversation. Okay. I'd like to, if, if you would like, and all of you could share one word about the OI Global. Yes, your experience um, would be great. So I'm going to share mine. But still, if you want to share something, either uh, unmute and, and share it with us or add it in the chat. I think one word, it's hard to find one word. Um, I think it's impressive. It's uh, many sessions, different topics and um, intense. Yes, that's a good word. Inspiring. Um, it's been a long ride for a lot, uh, 24 hours a day. So for a lot of days after uh, all in a row online with a low, uh, uh, very accessible and, but also uh, because it's online, easy to be distracted. Connection across the world. Yes. Engaging. And so much more to learn, which is a very one word, good, uh, good, uh, Fun, informative. Can only agree. Challenging, yes. Mm. 
Um, I think the chat is drying out. Uh, Alexandra? Yes. Do you want to reflect on this? Do you want to continue on this? Yes, uh, I would like to use all these words, you know, to uh, to just um, conclude this workshop. Yes, the importance of uh, uh, learn with others. So, so much more to learn as well. Uh, information, challenge, fun, the engagement, this connection, opportunity for interacting with people across the world, the inspiration, intensity. So I think that is a good, good uh, set of words for us to take with us. And from this workshop, um, it's just a, a kind of exercise for us to think. And if you'd like to keep in contact, please, I will keep that uh, um, padlet to increase with different topics related to open education that are relevant now post-pandemic or during the pandemic. But thank you very much for all of you to be here. And um, I just would like to stop to share a bit. I think we could, do, to, um, yeah, I'm just going to stop to share, to see our you, face. You want us to also stop the, I think your presentation or your workshop is, is uh, uh, do you want to continue or do, you, do we, should we? No, I think that uh, we came to the end to the, in the right. workshop because I would like it to, to see if anyone would like to add anything during the, yeah, I think these final minutes. Before you just, uh, I have a final, yes, exercise to conclude this workshop. Any more questions, please, or any comments? I don't see any questions or comments in yeah. the chat. So I'm I just don't like it. How can I stop to share the screen? Uh, this is something that I don't know how to do. Uh, I see. I stop recording or no, stopping share. Ah, here, yeah, I found it. <laughs> so gallery view, yes. I just would like to know, yeah, if you could, yeah, put your cameras, but I would like to, if you could raise your, if you have any drink, but I'd like it to toast. I'd like it to toast, yes. <laughs> We don't have this moment. I'm missing this moment that we get together, you know, to, to, to toast. Oh, yes, I will wait. This is so important. It's like the human contact. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I take a picture as well, this important moment. Also, hold your. Yes, it's so beautiful, this event about what's happening behind the screen. And I can see, yes, I can see via a smile or eyes, all of you, yes, uh, Igor, and uh, thank you, Martin, uh, Matilda, Gino, and Jaben. So yes, this is um, for OE Global. Thank you very much. This is amazing event. And next time, if you do online, we will be, you know, thinking about how to get together differently. Cheers. <laughs>